guy. Well, not, not big, 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 not Mr. Big. We got kind of mid between big. Yeah. What are we talking about? Here? Let's let's explain the bigness of this story. No surprises <laughs> here. The Lakers selecting first in today's National Basketball Association draft took James Worthy of North Carolina, a six foot nine inch power forward. Worthy helped lead the Tar Heels to the NCAA championship this past season as a junior. He chose to give up his final year of college eligibility and made himself available for the NBA draft. A good rebounder, ball handler, and quick afoot, he should complement the Lakers style of play very well. We were very torn between the three top people. Uh, they're all so good. I mean, usually this doesn't happen. Usually there's one or two outstanding, but three outstanding players. We spent a lot of time, and I guess about a week or ten days ago, we came to the conclusion it had to be James Worthy. He's kind of a system-orientated player, a player that has great agility, and we feel he can play two positions. So uh, we're delighted uh, to have the opportunity uh, to select him. Draft choice for the Lakers, Mr. Worthy. And he is big. He is 6'9". <laughs> we're going to be talking to James in just a moment. And Tricia, the Dodgers just getting underway now. First of the and we don't need any interpretation except what way that uh, John talks. But let me talk to you about the way basketball is going on. How? What was your reaction when you found out you were being drafted by the Lakers yesterday? Well, it was. A, I felt very, very good about the situation. Uh, I feel fortunate to be coming to a, a great organization, and <clears throat> they are very successful. And I would just want to continue to uh, contribute as much as I can in effort to continue the success that they already have. Do you feel with the success that they've already got that you'll be able to get into that starting lineup right off the top? That's not one of my main objectives. Uh, I just want to come and, and, and learn. I think it'll be a learning experience for me. And I don't think it's, uh, I think it's a good situation for me to learn under the best players. And uh, the Lakers do have those. James, let's take a look at Mr. Worthy in action down with the Tar Heels, which has scored 28 points in the title game against Georgetown. You average something like 15 points a game. You can play a couple positions. You can play power forward. You can play small forward. Do you have a preference over which you play? I really don't have a preference. Uh, I just want to play, and I think that's a, one of the, the biggest assets that I have, that I just want to play and not worry about where I'm playing at. Is there a similarity in the transition game between the Tar Heels and the Lakers, the, the way the style? A little bit. Uh, Coach Smith taught uh, fast tempo and, and fast transition, so I think that might make my adjustment a little bit easier here. You are the first player from North Carolina ever chosen the first player in the draft, Bob McAdoo and some of the other guys who were drafted in the first round. I know you do a great imitation of Dean Smith. I'm not going to ask you to do it right now. But what, what is it going to be like? What do you think is going to be the biggest difficulty, if there will be one, of making the transition from the college ranks to the pros? I think it's just a matter of time. Uh, the more I uh, am involved with it, uh, I think the more I get used to it. Uh, so I think it's just a matter of time. Mm -hmm. did, did you follow the Lakers in their NBA playoffs? Did you watch them on television? I saw a few games and uh, tried to study them as I watched them. Mm -hmm. Now, you haven't got an agent yet, I'm told. Is that going to be the first order of business, or is there going to you expect any difficulties in coming to a contract to settlement with the Lakers? I don't expect it to be any problem at all. Um, I'm in the process of, of getting an agent right now, and I think that will be the next thing in line. All right. Have you met any of the Lakers at all, any of the ball players? No, I haven't met any of them as of yet. Not yet. No. Well, listen, we want to welcome you to Los Angeles. We thank you for coming down and visiting with us. We're thank most you. appreciative. Good, Good luck. Here. Thank you. All right, James Worthy. It's lending excitement to an already exciting team. This is his story. The final game of the 1982 NCAA basketball tournament. Led by James Worthy, a brilliant forward only in his junior year, the North Carolina Tar Heels defeat Georgetown to win their first title in 25 years. Worthy is named MVP decides not to finish college, forfeits his senior year of eligibility to enter the NBA hardship draft, designed to permit financially ailing college athletes an opportunity to cash in on their talents prior to graduation. In Los Angeles, the star-studded Lakers defeat the Philadelphia 76ers to win the NBA championship. While Los Angeles is only 3,000 miles away from Chapel Hill, North Carolina, the Lakers are light years away from the Tar Heels in caliber of play and in lifestyle. They are not so much a team of ball players as they are a team of celebrities. Magic Johnson, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, Bob McAdoo, Jamal Wilkes, Norm Nixon, Michael Cooper, even their Hollywood-style coach, Pat Riley, a former broadcaster, and almost overshadowing the team, Jerry Buss, 
their freewheeling and flamboyant owner. L.A. has selected Worthy number one in the draft. And now this is the gulf which the kid from North Carolina must cross. Picture a 21-year-old who has just made the transition from a lifetime of small-town existence to the tinsel and glitter of Los Angeles. Worthy tells Howard Cosell about his first impressions. I was a little bit in awe uh, when I realized the type of atmosphere that I was going to be in, uh, having to make my own decisions uh, without any guidance at all. And uh, it was frustrating uh, trying to, you know, tell whether I could trust people. I probably lost a lot of friends by being too cautious. What friends did you lose specifically? And how do you know you lost them out of caution and awe, as you put it? Well, I was so cautious. Uh, I had heard so much about the big city in Los Angeles that I had sort of stereotyped it. And I was just wanting to be left alone. I uh, didn't want to trust anybody. Uh, and, you know, later I, re I realized that everybody isn't out to get you. I, I realized that there are some friendly people, but um, at the time, I was just a little bit too cautious. Laker teammate Irvin Magic Johnson, another hardship draft choice, knows what it's like to make the big jump. He experienced it all three years ago. Well, everybody's writing about you. Everybody's saying this and that. And uh, what you have to do is keep your head together. You know, you have to keep everything in the right perspective. You have to, uh, you know, put that over here. Because once you step out on that basketball court, and they've been hyping you and hyping you. Those guys are, uh, okay, show me. Show me what you can do, Mr. Rookie. You know, and they, they want you to show them because if, they, if you don't show them, they'll take your heart away from you. But so far, no one has taken James Worthy's heart away. If anything, he has taken Los Angeles' breath away with his stunning play and extraordinary speed. The high visibility in a media-conscious market like Los That's Angeles right. offers the opportunity for huge rewards. Magic Johnson can be seen on TV selling products as often as he can be seen dribbling a basketball. Including me. Former Laker Will Chamberlain and Kareem Abdul-Jabbar team up to extol the virtues of an airline. And Worthy already has won an endorsement contract from the New Balance Shoe Company. All heady stuff for a young man who grew up in tiny Gastonia, North Carolina. Both his parents had to work to keep James and his two brothers in school. His scholarship to North Carolina was a culmination of their dreams and hard work. James's decision to leave after three years was difficult for them to accept. How did your parents react when you told them that you won the lead of the University of North Carolina? play in the NBA, in effect, become a hardship case? I think they were shocked at first. Uh, they didn't want me to leave school. They wanted me to finish and get a degree on time. And uh, I had a hard time convincing them that I wasn't quitting school, that I was just giving up my last year of collegiate basketball, and I still had full intentions of finishing school. Worthy seems to have matured beyond his years, a quality appreciated by Coach Pat Riley. He has an air about him that he just wants to be part of the group. And uh, again, a lot of players that come out of college as the number one pick in the whole draft may feel like they should get more playing time or they come in and make a name for themselves. He really blend, blended in very well when he came and respected the territories of all the players that have really uh, established their reputations. And his performance uh, and his attitude opened the door for him to be accepted by the guys. And I think that was very important. He's a, a very, very mature person. Um, and uh, he's quiet, kind of a, a studious kind of guy. And uh, I, I really appreciate that, because that's more toward my personality. Uh, I'm not the life of the party type. And uh, meeting somebody like James who can uh, talk about some things other than the most obvious is it's refreshing. I, I appreciate that. James, is, he's just fitted right in. I mean, it's just like a, a puzzle piece. Just fit right there. And, uh, you know, everybody's excited about having me on the team. So on both a personal and professional level, James Worthy seems to be making a successful transition. But many athletes in the past, faced like Worthy with a sudden influx of money, have found the experience a shattering one. And the kid from Gastonia, 
now will be making as much as half million dollars a year. Can he handle it? Well, I, I believe in being happy first. And uh, I've never had uh, money. And now that I do, it, it's not, it hasn't changed uh, my life at all uh, because I know how it is to not have money.